Welcome to episode 57 of Slightly Unmeditated, a casual talk podcast about the WTFs of spirituality, self-improvement, and motivation with a lifelong delusional optimist who used to suck at meditation. I'm Tisha, and I'm so excited. Kim is with me tonight, Life Coach Kim. Hello, Hi, Kim. my friend. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> I am good. I am so excited you agreed to do this with me. Um, I did put it out on Facebook like a week early, so hopefully some people got a chance to watch. But a couple weeks ago, I watched a documentary on Amazon Prime called Three Magic Words. It was directed by Michael Perlin, and it came out in 2010. So in my love of documentaries, Mm -hmm. um, these ones that mean the most to me seem to find me like so very pointedly. I can't even explain it (laughs) because I will flip through every show in the, you know, in the whole program, in the whole platform to find something that strikes my fancy. And the last three that really touched me, I just kind of was like, oh, that one. And I'm going to watch it. Never read what it was about or anything. So there's some divine intervention in there. And I mm-hmm. I was so, I've talked about it already on a couple shows. And so I'm so happy that you came today to help me work through this one. <laughs> well, I thank you for suggesting it to me so that I could watch it. And it's interesting, you just stumbled upon it. So uh, I hadn't seen it before, but I had seen similar types of documentaries. So it, it that are actually that I found when I was becoming a coach. So there is a lot that's at the core of coaching that's connected to this documentary. And in so in the field of coaching is helping people, you know, re- get clarity about their life get clarity about who they are, go deeper, um, understand deeper, and then really understand their goodness and and their strengths and not feel too crushed or pulled down by any weaknesses or unfavorable thoughts they have about themselves, Um, even maybe unfavorable interactions they've had with other people. And so this I'm really excited also to talk to you about this because it's how I feel um, when I meet all these magnificent people that I do as a coach. I cannot wait to dive into this, like as, to explain that more. Um, but I, admittedly, I will say it is a bit of a deep dive into some stuff that you're not normally taught in life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so um, it could seem a little woo woo or worse for some people depending on your perspective and so if you do plan to watch like just do so with an open mind just take in some information and then hopefully maybe our discussion here um or maybe you should pause and not listen right now and go watch the documentary and then come back and listen to our discussion um we'll answer some questions or maybe make you feel a little bit more at ease about you know what was being said sound good That sounds good. What a wonderful way to like couch it right at the beginning. So I like that. You did well. (laughs) Your eyes are glowing. I see. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So Kim and I talked about this ahead of time, and I think we're going to just do a huge spoiler alert for a specific reason. Um, the, The show is called Three Magic Words, and essentially the three magic words in the documentary that you actually find out in the end are I am God. So Mm -hmm. that is the part I think most people, even myself, was like, "Hmm, really? However, having seen the whole documentary up until then and already believing what I believe, it wasn't so far-fetched for me. It was finally the time I heard that, maybe without cringing a little on the inside or worrying about lightning bolts coming down and hitting me. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Not feeling too, like, that's blasphemous. Absolutely. It, yeah, that it, it 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 when you watch the whole thing, it leads you there. But I I totally appreciate that you want to kind of begin with that, so that if that is triggering to someone, or they feel like that's blasphemous, or they feel uncomfortable with that, maybe they do n- not continue to listen at the moment. Go watch the documentary and then see where you know. Then revisit it. 
Right. And again, with an open mind, take what you need, leave the rest. Mm -hmm. And maybe like two years from now, go back and watch it again after listening to our shows every year for the next, you know, millennium. Um, and then see what resonates. And, you know, I'm, I'm sure I would not have gotten what I got out of it had I watched it, you know, three years ago. Last year, maybe. I'd probably be like, whoa, nope. <laughs> it's a little too woo-woo for me. So having said that, we've already spoiled what the three magic words are. But I believe you have some insight into what the what you think the actual three magic words were for you. So it, it all along, um, I'm thinking three magic words. I'm, you know, again, they come with I am God at the end, but it's who are we? So in the beginning uh, of the documentary, Three Magic Words, is this reiteration, who are we or who am I being these three words to go deeper? Who are we? And I deal with this a lot in coaching and we deal with it a lot in spirituality. It's like, who, what's, what's the meaning of all this? You know, who am I really? Oh, I'm Kim. I'm a wife. I'm a mother. I'm a coach. I'm, you know, I'm my title. I'm my height. I'm my age. I'm the roles in my life. Well, who, but, but really who are we? Who is the we that we've always been? You know, who is the you that you've always been looking out through your eyes? And that connects with that deeper sense of being, um, soul, if you will, our soul. You know, who are we? How did we get here? Yeah. So in the documentary started out with an interviewer asking people on the street that question, who are you? And a lot of people who couldn't even answer the question. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of people were like, oh, I'm a mother, you know, I'm a computer analyst or I don't mm -hmm. know what they said. Right. And they went immediately to their job and the things they did, not so much who they are. And you could tell they're comfortable in answering the question, but not really kind of like what what's your ulterior motive here? <laughs> um, and so they and went on to go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, too. And as I like to say, you're not a human doing you're a human being. But it's yeah. but it's, it's a little more elusive, you know. I do lay we do label things. The brain sure. needs to label things, and that's kind of how you describe things and how we self-identify. Well, they said in the in the documentary that we're set on the answers by our conditioning and by what society tells us that we're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. So of course, you know, a random string of people are all kind of answering the same question. And then they'd come across a couple of Buddhists or something who would be like, I am the light, you know, and, and have a little bit different kind of answer. Mm -hmm. So I love this part because I, lo I love when I learn things that are obvious to me, but when it, when they say things in a certain way that like sticks, right. When it resonates so hard that I'll never forget it. One of the first parts of it, of the documentary, they started talking about how we are basically our own galaxy made up of, of a billion of cells and each of the cells have their own lifespan and function. And so when you have a disease, it's actually a war inside your galaxy um, between cell groups. Mm -hmm. When you, when, just the thought of even thinking about like billions of cells inside there and they're all working. You don't have to think about breathing. You don't have to think about thinking. You don't have to think about anything that keeps you alive. And then I think about us being a cell in the universe, mm -hmm. right? So we are a cell of the universe, like a whole person. All of us are, billions of us. And I mean, doesn't that just like trip you out <laughs> like in, in a good way? Yeah. Like it really kind of puts things in perspective. It's a good me. trip. And I think this is where the whole, you know, I am God, it's very similar to, you know, a version of that is namaste. If you've ever heard anyone say namaste, it's, it's an expression that means I honor the divine in you, the God in you. And then someone answers namaste, they're saying it back to them. I honor the divine in you. There's a piece of God in all of us. And actually, that's not really counter to some traditional religions. But again, it gets a little wonky as to what's appropriate because 
of rules or even of man's interpretation of the divine. So I love, I, I did not take her name down and I, I just forgot. Um, there was an older woman that was in the documentary oh, and this is where mm -hmm. they started getting into the discussion about God being everything. Um, a couple of them made points about to call, to refer to God as a man is to belittle him because he is essentially everything. And by limiting him as a human man, you know, it's, it's not a good idea. Also, man, God is not man or woman, but they say referring to it doesn't sound so good. So he's, it's addressed as he in the Bible and throughout mm. all of the history. So that makes sense. Now, this is something I have believed um, forever that, again, God not being an actual human being, which I don't think people really believe that. I don't know. Um, but, but again, the powerful energy source that created the universe. I've said this before. I think that it's not a person up there with 7 million prayers to answer. He's, it's a situation where you've set up this universe to work like it does through law of attraction and all the other things and all the connectedness so that we could figure it out for ourselves and use it to our advantage. And within that, there's masculine energy and there's feminine energy. And yes. so it is neither he nor she, and, but yet it does feel disrespectful, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Or reverent <laughs> to take Absolutely. something so holy and sacred and be like it. So I understand where we don't get that. But it ha it, energy is a really, is a partially good term to, to invoke here, an image that there's this energy that's bigger, this higher power of energy that it has feminine and masculine that we, and we are an image. We are an image of God. So we are, so it may feel a little uncomfortable for some people to think of this way, or maybe it's humility. Um, maybe that's a scene as being boastful, but we, if we believe in a higher power that, and that is a creator, then we are part of that creation. Right. And Jesus, as the uh, one of the other guys referenced in the thing, Jesus was a human. He mm -hmm. was a healer, a light worker. And he was always telling people like, dude, you can do exactly what I'm doing. And like so much more, mm -hmm. right? You can do all of these miracles and have the positive thinking and turn people's lives around. And that's what people are trying to do today. And they mentioned that um, almost all of the rituals of religious structures um all kind of point we talk about this all the time kim how everything interconnects like how spirituality connects to self-improvement and the same words we're using you know over and over and it's the same thing in kind of in religion and now people are actually doing what i'm doing now is combining all aspects of different religions mm -hmm. in the way that they all make sense to each other mm -hmm. and then following that path like it's becoming more common Yes. The parallels, because when we say, you know, okay, think about God and it's neither he nor she there in, in, because it demeans it to, to really, I mean, we're just using a label for the sake of needing a term, but that it's bigger than we can fathom is very similar to Lao Tzu's Tao Te Ching. Cause he talks about the way the Tao is like, cannot be named. It cannot be fully understood because we don't, really know the whole big picture it's it's so beyond us right well even even back in the day there was gods for everything the goddess of love and the god of whatever i don't remember all the my mythology um and then you know when they converge into one and then people are kind of all following that and I, well i guess there's some religions that still follow like goddess of this and goddess of flowers and mm -hmm. you know. yeah there are and then the different Again, though, it, different religions have different mores, if you will, around feeling like you're God or part of a God or the God in you is all that maybe that's where it varies a little bit. Yeah, I think some people feel comforted by having like another human upstairs, like saying, you guys will take care of it for me, right? <laughs> <laughs> There's some people that. 
do that. I see that. I can understand. I like the notion of having this space available to us to figure out. And, you know, they, they even noted in the documentary that um, our, our, our ingenuity has led us to science. Mm-hmm. humans and that we are now able more than ever to prove connectedness and that science are really realizing that literally everything on earth is just moving energy constant and interestingly even einstein proved that energy never dies so when they say like the soul lives on after even though your body's not here all of your energy is still here still making up part of the universe yeah and that Einstein, right? So you go, okay, Mr. Super Scientist. Now you're saying, you know, you're on the side of God. Because two, he one of the things Einstein also said is there's two way of looking at things as if everything's a miracle or as if nothing's a miracle. And we can walk around the world that way. We really can. We can walk around the world just noticing nature and each other and seeing the wonder and the awe. And then we know. Like, oh my gosh, I know there's a higher power because look at all this magnificence and look at how things work together. Or we can feel very disconnected and 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 shut off to that and m- maybe even miserable and feeling anxious that we're making our own way 1000%. Like we really have work we have to do while we're here, but we are not alone. Yeah. Uh, two points to that one first and then the other because these are so good i love these so the the busting the whole uncomfortableness of i am god to me meant that the same particles in the universe are in me the same energy that is in god is in me it doesn't mean that i'm claiming to be better than anybody else by saying i am god but what i'm saying is that god is in everything so when you see that, when you look at the flower next time, when you kind of have that understanding, you're like, there's God too. There's God in the elephant that I love so much, mm-hmm. you know, or like you said, your clients, you can sit down uh, and see like that, which they cannot see sometimes, you know. Every time I meet with a client and I meet a new person, I'm just in awe of the magnificent person in front of me and see that maybe more clearly than they do. And um, that, you know, compassionate coaching space for them to work out whatever it is that they're working out. But so often we, we get caught up like the visual, the visual that's the backdrop to all the different people talking in this documentary is this young woman who's distraught, depressed, drinking, um, in complete despair. And there, even though she's not saying anything, you just see the images and you totally know, you know, what's going on. She's just like, life is not worth living. She feels awful. She feels anxious. She feels unworthy. Uh, you name it, unworthy, uh, anxious, not, you know, just like a waste. And she's has total despair. And throughout, it starts to move. That backdrop starts to move as she connects with nature. So sometimes it's like us just connecting with nature or as all the different people are talking in the documentary about our real amazement of uh, that we are, go when we think about who we are, go deeper than maybe that failed marriage or that failed job or whatever would be going on in that woman's life to make her feel like all is lost. Yeah. And and really connect to what is more real and being connected to your own magnificence. Yeah. Well, I I love now again having known a lot of this theory and and information that they talked about it really, really hit home. You say about staying connected to nature and people always say that, oh, well, go get connected to nature. Most people walk outside like, what am I supposed to do? Look at a tree? Like yeah, they don't get I'm it. I'm kind of right? like that because I'm like, I'm an indoor girl, really. I, honestly. <laughs> I could go either way, but at the same token, I'm not so sure that I, I necessarily will go out and be like, 
there's a flower, look at this and look at that. I mean, I'll admire something that's pretty, of course, but this sort of took it a little bit to a different level for me in that I can understand that I am God, this is God. Uh, there's right. God in here and there's God in there. And then you feel that like, oh, I just love that extra, right? And I, will, I won't pick that flower because, you know, uh-huh. I'll leave that blade of grass alone. I'm not going to intentionally destroy something. That was another important point. You know, someone said, we're the stewards and the guardians of the planet and we haven't acted like it at all because we yeah. keep harming everything. And by harming everything out, by harming everything else, we're harming ourselves and essentially extinction, extinction. It, it, I'm saying that right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Could come for all of us. Oh, most um, of I just, I just was watching something where they said there's a belief and I didn't no research on this. I literally heard it before we started. Um, where where humanity is on its like third cycle, where we've some somebody believes this, where we've destroyed ourselves twice, oh, and the, and we're on our third cycle because now archaeologists are finding things that are way older than they should be, mm-hmm. um, and pretty advanced for times back then. So I'm yeah. going to do some research on that, but I thought it was yeah. Nice. Well, and the interesting thing is too how I joke about being an indoor girl. You know, I am not really outdoorsy. Yeah, I wheeze and sneeze. And <laughs> have seasonal allergies and stuff like that. I like my nose in a book inside. In winter, I just hibernate. So I always say I'm descended from bears. But all I'm that. I'm sorry, but you totally sounded like Eminem rapping there for a moment <laughs> for like a seasonal allergy commercial. I'm so happy we have that recorded. <laughs> so, but so with all that as a backdrop in and of itself, when we, when I went to Hawaii, And it was at the absolute worst time of my life. So right before um, we lost my son, Jack, my dear, dear friend at work moved to Hawaii from New York. And I, you know, actually, I was supposed to be giving her going away speech. I had it all written and I was in the car accident that completely changed my life. And we lost my son, Jack, who was nine. My son, Stephen, who was seven, survived, thank God. And my life, I was 35 and my life was divided forever. So about six months later, as we were trying to navigate our new life and tons of pain and tons of grief um, with my little now eight-year-old, six months after losing Jack, you know, my friend had said, come come to Hawaii, come visit. And and even though it seemed like a crazy thing to do at a time when we were in so much pain, it was actually a very good thing to do to leave the winter. It was February to leave the winter, to go somewhere beautiful and, and meet up with a friend and spend some time doing that. So we pulled it, I don't know how, pulled this trip together. And Dave, Steve, and I went. And I'll tell you the beauty of nature there made me so much feel the presence of God, seeing huge mountains and beautiful water and spectacular plants. And I needed to see that. I needed to connect with what was bigger, much bigger than me. And it helped me with the beginning stages of my perspective Hmm. that I needed there to be something bigger than me. I, I, I needed it and I needed it to speak to me because there was a beauty entering my eyesight of what I was seeing that was soothing to me and comforting to me. And for us to leave winter, as you can imagine, was kind of soothing and out of the fishbowl of our community who was super loving, but everybody knew what happened to us. So everywhere we went was like this feeling of pain and pain reflected in everyone else's eyes too. So the the experience, it really was nature in Hawaii that I think was the first time I actually did connect with nature in that way. Like it is bigger than me and I need it to be bigger than me. I, I don't need to be the biggest. I can't be the biggest thing because then we're all screwed. You know, right. like I needed to feel connected to God and it helped me there. And it's amazing. It I love, thank you for sharing that story because- I would feel guilty about not being connected to nature now in this new understanding. And then in light of your story now, I really get it of 
how that can feel to just be feel like you're still part of something, even though you feel like everything else has fallen apart. Right. I and needed that's something... to be a speck <laughs> in a yes. good way, in a yeah. good way of like the magnificence of the entire humanity in the world. If there's some, there's a much bigger picture here and I'm a part of it. And that actually comforts me. I'm not the the champion of this and I'm not operating on my own power. And I hope, you know, I guess that's what in this documentary too, as you see the the character that's doing this backdrop of the woman in despair, but then kind of connecting and her openness to nature and learning things is like taking the pressure off her from whatever she felt was some big failure that was put her in despair, whatever failed marriage, failed relationship, failed job, uh, bankruptcy, all the things you can think of that, that really crush people. It's, it's fascinating because in hindsight, just at this moment, I'm thinking, my God, that was my life for like the years ahead of, of this podcast. And then this last year that's been recorded is like the upside of her journey in this documentary. And it didn't Ooh. hit me till just right now. Yeah. Oh, chills. Mm. See? <laughs> yeah. And, it, and you can relate to when you watch it to so much. There are so many times we go, we are on autopilot. We're making our way. A lot of our culture reinforces that too. Hey, no pain, no gain. And, you know, you're making your own way in the world and it can feel so cold and lonely. Um, some people have emotional traumas and Things can feel so oppression. We, we have addiction issues. There, things can feel so hard. But that connection to you are your own magnificence and, and to be able to put some of the anxiety aside and say, you know, I have a piece of God in me. Yes, I do. Right. I, I mean, I feel like it is a message that we should share more with people because then they could feel better about themselves. Yeah. And I get, again, that impacted me in a way that made it, may, took the guilt away of feeling any other way. Okay. I, I'll mm -hmm. put it that way. Uh, there was a point in here I had somewhere um, where they said that, you know, we're not just people meant to get up and go to work every day. <laughs> you know, that's not our end goal here. Um, mm -hmm. There was also a, a quote I don't, I, he was a Hindu God and I don't know if I'm saying his name right. It was Prince Hanuman, H-A-N-U-M-A-N. Mm -hmm. um, it said, if you are still attached to your religion, your color or the country you were born in, then you don't know who you are. Mm, those labels because they're labels Yeah, and, and you are deeper than that. And you, the, the, it does fit. One of the things I wrote down too fits in here too, is the great spiritual geniuses, whether it was Moses, Buddha, Plato, Socrates, Jesus, or Emerson have taught man to look within himself to find God. And that was a quote by Ernest Holmes. And it's true, even if you look at spiritual writings or translations um, of different spiritual leaders, they really are all sharing parallel messages to look inside yourself and to feel the presence of God. Yep. Here's one from Gandhi. I am endeavoring through, I can't see. I am endeavoring th uh, through, wait, I am endeavoring to see God through service to humanity. For I know that God is neither in heaven nor down below, but in everyone. And I, I, there are quite a lot of quotes on there, like Plato and stuff, like you said, that all had the same message over and over and over. And essentially, like society has just made everything so complicated. People don't know what to believe. Even, well, in, even in these times, people have no idea what to believe is true or false. Well, here's my philosophy, because what happened was, and you know what we talk a lot about on my show and then sometimes on your show, is uh, the ego. So when mankind, including womankind, when we interpret things, we're putting the ego's lens over it and the way the ego might be interpreting it, yeah. the way human beings are interpreting things is not separate from our ego. 
So that makes me think of like Eckhart Tolle saying in his book, Power of Now, he said he's asked, he does it, the book is kind of question and answer type. So one of the questions he had from someone was, why don't you use the word God? And he said, I don't use the word God, like he'll use source or higher power, the, you know, those types of references. Right. And he said, the only reason I don't use that word is because it's been so misused for so many centuries. So that word has been used to kill other people. You have the, you know, definitely well, time periods and brutality around, you know, whose interpretation of God in the name of God. That's still happening today. I mean, sad as it is. And if we truly saw God in everybody else, we wouldn't kill anybody. I mean, can you imagine killing God? No, you can't, you can't even imagine saying you are part God, right? That's blasphemous. Exactly. And and then too, that reminds me. So Mother Teresa said in the people that she served and lepers and people dying that she served, she said, I see the face of God or I see the face of Jesus. She, you know, she's saying, I see it in everyone. Absolutely. And then if people could realize that there was another quote, and I don't know who said it, I just wrote it down as self realization is the greatest service you can render the world. So by becoming aware of this connection, and, and staying aware of it, and not, you know, killing somebody because they cut you off in traffic, you know, mm -hmm. you know, start kind of seeing the world in that way. There's God in, you know, our children, and there's God in our pets, and there's God in every like the tree and everything. And I don't, it just brings me so much peace and a feeling of purpose that I feel sorry for people who don't get it, who kind of don't see the connection. I, I want to mention the Fibonacci uh, sequence too. Like I already posted it on Facebook. You can go look at it or look it up online. And it's basically scientific proof of the connectedness through everything in the universe. And I love it. It's so mathematically challenging for me to even explain, but I didn't want to not mention it because I said I would, but it's basically a series of numbers that occur in everything, the petals and flowers, you know, I saw pictures the other day of um, similarities between like galaxies in the universe and our eyes. Oh. I wish I had, I don't know where I saw it. I wish I had saved it, but it looked amazing. There are pictures of people's eyes that look like, you know, comets busting through space. <laughs> oh, yeah. I could, I think I know what you're talking about. I've, I've seen that as well. But two, you know, as we consider and we think, you know, who are we? Okay, so think deeper. All right. Who am I? Who am I? Um, there was another great quote I wrote down too. All that is required to realize the self is to be still. What can be easier than that? And that was Ramana Maharshi. And the thing is, it's slightly unmeditated. It's like, that's hard. Yeah. <laughs> Still, yeah. do we go, oh, you know, I can't do that. It's not for me. No good. But, you know, for anyone who, you know, maybe it's not meditation for you, or maybe you're meditating, you don't know it when you're sitting at the ocean and you're just breathing it in and you're listening to the waves. Oh, I know. Absolutely. I can't wait to do that. I'm like so excited. <laughs> so I think that sometimes people do it and they don't realize that they're doing it or they, you know, have preconceived notions about meditation as a waste of time. I think, you know, even there's a connection to, you know, I don't want to take too great a leap, but you know, when we do find your center and at the end, when I say, you know, helping you find your center, when you do, you build a better world. That's, you know, that's my coaching version of connect, you know, when you connect inward and you find your sense of centeredness and groundedness in life, you are building a better world. Just like what you had said, the person said, when self-realization is like the best thing you can do. Yeah. And you're not building it just for yourself. It's for every person around you. You know, that's, that's the most important thing when you start seeing the beauty. And, and again, that's a term that used to piss me off because I would be like, what do you mean? See the beauty. <laughs> you know, I get it now. I see that all of us are, you know, 
a cell in this giant body of wherever we're living? And how do you fight against something that's just you, right? Oh, I'm going to take a break for just a second for Bubbles and Books. Oh, <laughs> we'll <yeah>. be right. <laughs> I keep forgetting. <laughs> we'll be right back. Bubblesandbooks.com has been a supporter of Slightly Unmeditated since day one. This amazing subscription box delivers self-care right to your door. They pack up a book in the genre of your choice each month and add in a selection of high-quality, handmade bath and body items. There's no better way to chill with a book than to read in a nice, hot bubble bath. You can choose your favorite genre and set up your subscription for effortless relaxation. You can also purchase individual boxes for your book and bath-loving friends. Check out our favorite, the Personal Growth Box. Just visit bubblesandbooks.com to sign up. Enter Unmeditated35 at checkout to receive 35% off your first box of relaxation. All right. That was amazing. Bubblesandbooks.com, our sponsor from day one. Awesome. On with the show. <laughs> <laughs> Bubbles. Bubbles. Are part of the magic and miracle of life, too. So, yeah. So, you know, when we think about God, source, universe, you know, people have different terminology. Um, whatever you're comfortable with. As a coach, I tend to say things when when I kind of go into the spiritual, which sometimes in coaching, that's exactly what someone wants. And that's great. So as coaches, we do a lot of that as well. It's, it is like, you know, I'll use all three, I'll say God, source, universe, just like whatever term works for you, for the person. Right. Right. And when you, even when you talk about law of attraction, I mean, that's like kind of universe is the concept of like, you know, this, we are in part of a much bigger system. And if, so people don't feel bad or guilty <laughs> that they haven't caught on. I don't know how to explain it otherwise, but they made a point in the documentary a couple of times to mention about how, you know, so much of society does isolate us and separate us. And a lot of the separation theologies, like all the ology, sociology, psychology, mm -hmm. all of that kind of separates us even further. And then when you factor in religion, even though a, a lot of religion points to the same thing and all of our um, rituals in religion and spirituality are basically the whole point of them is to connect to the higher source, to God, whatever it is that you say, it's all common theme. And it boggles my mind sometimes how people don't see past that. Like, I mean, I, we could go on a whole thing there, but I like this other one part. I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say what you're describing, and I wrote this in my notes too, pathological self-destruction through the idea of separation. The more separated we feel, and now the ego is our sense of self. It's how I know I end and you begin, you know? So we we need that to a certain extent to navigate the world, right? Um, we can't all be walking around going, we are one. And, you know, there we need a balance. But the idea that we are so separate is hurtful to us as human beings. We we do want to feel more connected. We do want to know that we are all connected. And then I also found where, you know, I had jotted down and you had said this about what Jesus said. He, he, he said, ye are gods and you do not know it. Yeah. Well, about the, uh, about the ego, Albert Einstein, I, I'm not sure that's a quote, but he coined the term of optical delusion of consciousness, where we feel like one ego is appearing as many is just an illusion. Well, we don't feel like that, but that's what he's saying. One ego appearing as many is an illusion, the optical delusion of consciousness. Mm. I, I was surprised it was Albert Einstein when I wrote that down. Mm. And I, I like this visual too. Um, one of the gentlemen in the documentary was talking about African theology um, and, and the belief that God is in all things. And so he said that a drop of water can consider itself as one drop in the ocean or as the entire ocean, right? So I think we, so many people think of themselves as one drop in the 
on the planet Mm -hmm. (laughs) instead of what makes up the rest of the planet, you know? And that's where you're saying about separating yourself. I mean, truly, I didn't really think about it that deeply until this documentary. I mean, I like the feeling of what, what these things that I'm learning here make me feel. That makes me feel whole and safe and secure and peaceful. Mm-hmm. And then when you get that, I mean, I, I've been on a peaceful journey for a good year now, so I know how it feels and I know how comforting it is. Then when you step outside into the chaos, you're like, mm, no, <laughs> can't do it today. <laughs> so, yes, there are days we feel a little bit more of that uh, magnificence and, and days that we're feeling oppressed and uh, tr- trudging through on our own. But really, it does bring you peace and comfort. And I think that is That actually was the purpose, I think, of religion. And I think somewhere along the line, again, it's our human ego's interpretation of things that can kind of twist it to make us feel like we are sinners and we're all bad. And and I think it's meant to make us feel good. And it's meant for us to look at each other as magnificent human beings and, and, and treat ourselves well, like treat ourselves with care because we are a part of something, you know, I might think I'm a little chubby and I got to lose some weight and I'm, you know, maybe really down on myself. And it's like, I'm, my body operates amazingly. Isn't that a miracle? We have every, oh, I don't know where it is. It's in my notes here somewhere and you're going to hear some papers because I'm going to furiously find it. It was about how our bodies have every thing we need to do what we need to do. Everything, the answers, everything, meditation, sit in, listen, what your body's saying, breathing, cells working, all of that, everything that we could possibly ever need is within our own bodies. Yeah. The next time you're criticizing your wrinkles or your nose or your love handles, it's like, think about, think deeper. What about the cells working together and your organs and all of that amazement. Oh, I love this part too. Might be a little woo-woo for some. Someone said in the documentary, our cells like us to talk to them. And to them, we are the voice of God. And that's that's how people can heal themselves and why we reinforce positive speaking, you know, and stop negative talk. And we do that with plants. People are quick to accept that. Oh, I talked to this plant and it thrived. I belittled, I just posted something on Instagram about this uh, concept. Um, The negative talk killed the other plant, right? And people can accept that, but yet they can't see it for themselves. So the field of epigenetics is this growing study of, you know, our thoughts having impact on our cells and even maybe turning on or off some genetic predispositions. So Deepak Chopra and Dr. Tanzi wrote Super Genes. Dr. Joe Dispenza uh, wrote You Are the Placebo. And of course, they both wrote other books too, but really epigenetics is studying like where, where is the connection between our thoughts and our feelings on our cells and how that plays into our health. Yeah. And knowing that you have, I'm, you know, most of what you need inside you to do things. And I don't want to go off on a whole thing about all kinds of things. Obviously, if you get really sick, you need help, medical help, all of that stuff. What I am going to say is that a lot of this concept is there's no money in it for somebody else, right? I mean, that's got to play a play a role there right so a lot of people aren't being taught this or they're being taught the opposite like it's crazy to think you can do this Mm. why is it so crazy if like two people can make another person you know what i mean from nothing yeah i mean it's just well and the, the two can coexist so you can have like western medicine eastern holistic medicine you can have you know when you think of things like uh, qigong is ancient chinese um energetic 
uh, I'm probably botching this up, but like, you know, the meridians and in different kind of medical philosophy in a- ancient medical, like hand de- down in families and right. tradition versus, you know, more like Western medicine and pharmaceuticals. So, and not to say there, there is a place for all of that. In fact, the magnificent beings have have worked on all this and created yes. this for our benefit. Uh, same as a bridge that I can drive over. Amazing. I'm totally floored by that every time I drive over a bridge because how did they actually make that? I still, it, it boggles the mind. Especially but, the really long ones, right? <laughs> They're like three miles and you're like, what were they how, doing on boats? Yeah. Some engineer figured that out and somebody figured out how to engineer. And so that to me is proof of God. When I look around and I see that there are beautiful people who can entertain us and sing and, you know, play musical instruments and build bridges and treat me at the hospital and this, this variety of everything we need. And you just reminded me, going back to the Fibonacci sequence, like that's all in music. That's all in in art and in, in whatever it is that that we're making and putting out there and what nature already has for us all has the same crazy numerical sequence. Because uh, I always think about that, like the vibrations, we're energy. Of course, we like music. Of course, we like mm-hmm. singing. Of course, we like things that, you know, fast rides. It's all vibrational. It's all more energy. Like, why wouldn't we like those things? Exactly. But I, and I love all your points. But that's where the reinforcement of paying attention comes in and sitting quietly with yourself, listening, be a little crazy, like pretend like those cells are really talking to you until they start talking to you. Right. You know, you don't, you don't know what works for you until you try it until you make it work. And even if you made it through listening to this whole show, like (laughs) I commend you (laughs) and I appreciate you for listening. And I love having a life coach who's so smart, but also totally rocking the spiritual (laughs) world too, because it helps me work all this out for myself, talking it out loud. And uh, this documentary, I was so excited. Again, it's uh, for me, it's a lot of basic information. It's just the way it was presented that makes it stick in my head. I love that you see all of your clients as these magnificent you know, I don't always have the gumption to do that to people. I, I give them the benefit of the doubt, you know. But well, on far the be inside, it for me to make myself sound like Mother Teresa. Like, yeah, I see the face of God in every client. But honestly, there is that that's partially a real statement. I mean, I feel that connection. I feel like no matter what someone's going through, I know that they're great and there's magnificence. It may be buried under worries or some troubles, a a perfect storm of maybe events or or even some say someone comes to me because they're like, I have these goals and I want to do this and I want to do that. Like even that excited person is not coming to me with problems, but it's like that's, you know, helping them seeing in them that greatness that they can connect all those dots and use their skills and talents and abilities in amazing ways. You are aware that you do exactly that for me, right? Like you, you do understand that is our relationship, right? Because you're talking <laughs> about it, maybe like you didn't realize it. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> I guess I didn't. <laughs> oh, that's so great, right? So <laughs> that's why I've never felt like I've come to you with all these troubles and distress. I'm always like, Kim, I'm so full of ideas. Like, what are we going to do next? You're right. So yes, I do see that in you. And, and it is equally as uh, miraculous and magnificent to me as then someone who's being crushed, you know, in the, in the moment, maybe they're in a dark time. And I do, I really connect with this. Who are you? Because I've done it in my own life to go like, okay, who am I? And it has evolved deeper and deeper and deeper. And one of the things towards the end of the documentary is they said, who are you? It's a lot simpler than you think. We've made it complex as human beings. Just surrender and you'll become aware of your true self and your true nature. 
So those are like four steps. So as a coach, to, for me, to the way I wrote, wrote it down was like four steps. If you want to find out who you are, because it is a worthy pursuit, it absolutely is. One, no, it's a lot simpler than you think. Two, your ego has made it complex. Three, just surrender, because then your being can start to speak a little bit over the thinking, over the ego. And four, you'll become aware of your true self and your true nature. Man, it it is an interesting journey, becoming aware, becoming self, having some self-realization. It's it's like it changes everything. Like I can't explain it in words. I don't know that I'll ever be able to explain it in words. Um, this last week I had to take a spirituality break, mm. if you will. I just, it was not bad, not good. It was like, I just had to be like, a, I don't know, just do mundane things, you know, work, no judgment though, like l learning all those life coaching concepts, mm -hmm. um, you know, making small decisions, exercising over a binge, watching the rest of Ozark, whatever it was. And I actually did both yesterday. Super proud. Um, and, and kind of letting everything I've learned in the last year, just sort of sink in maybe one final time so I could move on. Um, mm. Didn't meditate, didn't, do any of my little things that I do. And it was like a break. It was so nice. But then I got to come back today and do this with you, let alone like speaking to you, but also covering this documentary. And I just feel like I just leveled up or something. Well, and throughout, so the woman that is like the backdrop image of someone who is obviously suffering, obviously feeling like things are just lost, hopeless despair. And over the time, they keep showing images of her feeling better about life and connected to the things around her and kind of lightening up. And one of the things I talk about in coaching is we, sometimes it's important for us to take heavy burdens off our shoulder. Like we have to do what we have to do in life, but we also don't need to fret that we're in control of everything. And we don't even, sometimes we desire to control everything because then we'll feel less anxious. We don't need to do that. And when we connect at that deeper lever, level, if we accept that there is divinity in us, a lot of opportunities open up for us to feel good, yeah. to feel connected and supported. There's an expression in A Course in Miracles that, that says, um, if you knew who walked beside you on this journey that you take, you would never feel alone again. Yeah. I get a lot of that learning about my spirit guides. I get a lot of uh, confirmation and synchronicities with that. I'm not an expert. I know some basics about what I'm supposed to do. Um, and just, it's really about trusting that whole process and everything I'm learning. And I think that's what this spiritual break was about. I mean, it may not have actually been a break. It was just a surrender of stop thinking, stop worrying about when it's going to happen, stop doing this. And I just stopped all of it. I haven't had a daydream, nothing. And it's been so freaking relaxing and smooth going. So <sighs> yeah, Namaste. this is great. Exactly. Yeah. Namaste. Yeah. <laughs> Namaste. I, know. I love it. It's like a meditation when we um when we do this. In fact, we we're talking, I'm gonna rat you out. We we're talking about the uh find your center episode that probably airing after this. Mm -hmm. Um it was a rough day for you. And we both came <laughs> to the table like tired and frazzled, yes. thinking we absolutely just sucked really bad. Um I was editing the show and I was just so endeared by us. I listened to it twice. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> it's just this connection. If there's no explanation outside of what we just explained. That's what I said. You bring out the best in me because I had uh, this feeling. I very much. So then I told Tisha, I, I had this feeling 
that this is it. This is going to be my flub up. I'm all frazzled. There was something going on. So I'm like, my head was all scattered, but I had the topic and I'm like, well, here it goes. Right. And I go, this is going to be that bomb episode I've been dreading. My ego has been like, you're going to have a real horrible episode soon. Right. (laughs) And so I'm like, oh, this is going to be that bomb. And then I listened to it and I was cracking up because I go, Oh my gosh, this is actually quite good. And then, and and not in an egotistical way. I was just like shocked. And then I was like, "Oh my gosh, I thought it was going to be the bomb." And it turned out to be the bomb. Oh, no. <laughs> so... <laughs> no, I mean it's a perfect example of that connectedness. Like there was no other reason for us to meet. You know, I'm sure there's a million circumstances we could have met at I could almost canceled because you you almost gave me an out. Like we have time before this airs. If you don't want to tape today, I think you said that. And I was like, yeah, I'm here. Let's do this. (laughs) And uh, so the, the episode, should we tell them the episode is? Sure. Yeah. It it was was elevate. What do you need? It was elevate. Yeah. 17, I think. No, 18. 18. Yeah. So it'll be coming up after this one. <laughs> so then the listeners can be the judge because they, they were like, eh, give it the thumbs up, thumbs down. <laughs> yeah, we'll do a thumbs up, the thumbs down poll. But I, I've i felt like this a lot. Uh, Juanita just said it a couple episodes ago, she just was going to cancel on me. A couple other people have said that actually I was going to cancel, but I felt, you know, and it just turned out to be like this, the most amazing connection. And it's Again, the connection, the speaking about it, understanding it, and and knowing somebody else knows what I know makes it even so much more magical. And as a magician, I appreciate that, right? <laughs> that's oh. right. So that's great. And you bring out the best of people when you have them on the show. And it's definitely getting into the flow. It's, and can, and really connecting and and like minded you know issues like minded things people are talking about like minded people and it all all really under the guise of us all trying to figure out who we are what what is all this you know what is this thing called life who why are we here what are we doing yeah. and again I commend anybody listening to any of our episodes and just like taking. You know, I know a couple of people that actively listen that I was a little surprised they're listening, but I'm so happy that they're doing it with an open mind. And hopefully we're speaking in a way that resonates with people, like the questions that that maybe they would be asking. And if we're not, send us the questions you'd yeah. be asking. That would be Honestly, so much fun. I would know? love to do episodes where people said, hey, could you talk about this or that? Or, you know, that would be great. Definitely. Yeah, I did actually have one request on Facebook, so I'm going to try and find somebody to cover that topic. Um, But if you're happy with this uh, documentary review, I think we should do some more of these. It really kind of um, sparked, gave me a little sparkle to to have something to talk about. So that I like it. (laughs) One of the last things that I noted too, because they were talking, you know, they were interviewing people and people were starting to get deeper. Like at first they're like, who are you? Oh, I'm a wife. I'm a mother. I'm yeah. And then towards the end, they were getting some people who were going deeper. And, and so, you know, they just ended with somebody was saying, I am love. I am peace. I am happiness. I'm creativity. I am endless. Love everyone. Yeah, it's cute, too. Then they left this running kind of uh, talking, running interviews over the credits. And I don't know if you remember the one guy. I I felt bad I didn't write down everybody's names. Um, But uh, the one guy was saying that when he was a kid, he had a library book and he it was late and he didn't want to take it back because he felt so guilty. So he buried it in the backyard and somebody found it and his parents made him bring it back to the library. And he was just devastated. Like, and my own daughter did this, which is even funnier uh, as a little kid. But he was so devastated that he had to like walk in there with this overdue book. And he was just, he didn't know what to do. Guilty, shame. And the librarian was like, oh, I'm so happy. I never mm-hmm. thought we'd get this book back. And it was like their only copy or whatever. Didn't charge him any money or anything. And he said he'll never forget the lesson as long as he lived. That just forgiveness 
and like the love that she had just to have that book back. And that was like his life changing moment at like eight or whatever. Oh, and the release of shame. And, and it's such, it's symbolic of the whole documentary and the whole topic is that we're human beings and we do things and we have feel shame and we feel vulnerable and uncomfortable and not good about ourselves at times. And yet there's a much bigger picture and there's so much light and so yeah. much brightness and love so much love mm-hmm. from people they they say that if you just need that example of how we're all in this together is like consider a catastrophe and you know hurricane everybody comes together with the same purpose like why don't we operate that way all the time right. you know Right. Well, this has been a very special episode. I'm so thank you for letting me participate with you on this. Thanks for playing along. I'm so excited we can do we can go across the fences. Like this is amazing. We're gonna have to have a fourth show off the fence. <laughs> Over <laughs> the, the fence. fence. Over, the, Over fence. the fence. Off the shelf. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. All right. Well, I hope everybody listening has learned a little something about yourself and who you are. And feel inspired to keep learning. Um, Remember that we drop new episodes of Slightly Unmeditated every Thursday. And you can listen to us on Spotify, Apple, wherever you get your podcast. You can also check us out on SlightlyUnmeditated.com, the Facebook page and Instagram. And we are now starting to reload our YouTube, our videos up on YouTube. So until we meet again, I am sending you all positive energy and sincerest gratitude. I am Tisha, and I will always be slightly unmeditated.